Oryx and Crick, a dystopian sci-fi and romance novel written by Margaret Atwood in 2003. I first stumbled upon this book when I was in my, what, senior year of high school, and now three years later, studying at Cambridge University, I finally realized that it has such profound psychological significance, which can be easily compared to our society. The society in Oryx and Crake exemplified how impulsivity can lead to chaos and destruction because of the population's strong aid tendencies, which they pursued relentlessly and recklessly with the help of psychological defense mechanisms. If that sounds confusing, don't worry, I'll explain it in a minute. XD! <laughs> Please, you'll make me go over time. My name is Jeff. The story starts off with Snowman, the protagonist, who is left to fend for himself, oblivious of his surroundings in a post-apocalyptic world, as one of, if not the only, human survivor. This disastrous outcome from what was once a thriving world can be attributed to society's obsession with science and technology. In this dystopian world, these two things were seen as paramount and determinants of power and social hierarchy. Art and emotions, which are the opposite of science and technology, didn't really matter at all, and so as a result, the society sought out pleasure not through relationships and personal development, but through quick and easy gratification through external stimuli. According to the founder of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud, we're all controlled by three things. The superego, the id, and the ego. Your superego is like your moral compass or your conscience. Your id consists of all possible impulsivities and primal biological drives. And your ego is like your reality principle, which controls how you act based off of your superego, your id, and your objective reality. When a person isn't able to satisfy the needs of their id, ego, and superego, the ego is threatened by a painful emotion called anxiety. In order to prevent or protect our minds from this anxiety, Subconsciously, we use something called defense mechanisms. The classic Freudian defense mechanisms that I'll be focusing on, that were featured in the novel, are denial, isolation, intellectualization, and turning against the self. Here are some examples in real life. Oh. oh, you still have that dead bird, Larry? That's his fine, man. Shut up. Hey, why don't you be more social? I was abused as a child. So what? No big deal. It happens. Like, everyone, pretty much anyone can get abused. Like, it, it happens. No big deal or anything. Like, yeah. The first defense mechanism was denial. Subjects indulged in obscene and inappropriate entertainment in their spare time, such as hardcore porn, executions, and animal mutilations. The breach of the superego and moral compass was justified with the defense mechanism so that the id-pleasing entertainment could still be watched without any moral anxiety derived from it as a consequence. Subjects use isolation to distance themselves from an undesirable or uncomfortable situation or reality in which there wasn't much of a tolerance for. The high-class populations in Oryx and Crake had a superiority complex based off of their competences in science and technology, and as a result, they lived isolated from the rest of the city populations, living in high-security compounds. Intellectualization was used by subjects to justify their immoral and apathetic actions by trivializing emotions and using logic and thinking as a substitute. Abuse of animal testing and genetic modification was justified with the fact that it was helping scientific development, which is beneficial to all society. Thinking away the emotions was what was done in this situation. And last but not least, turning against the self was used by subjects so that they could protect their egos from a painful reality at the expense of their health and well-being, physically and mentally. Several people in the society of Oryx and Crick couldn't handle the fact that they were very unsatisfied living in this nihilistic society, so they used drugs and alcohol as a way out from the realities of depression and ostracization. They wouldn't have been able to deal with their pain otherwise. These are all ways in which a subject can distort their reality 
so that it is more tolerable for their ego and they won't experience any emotional pain. In Orcs and Crick, these defense mechanisms were used to justify society's obsession with the id, driven by science and technology. As you can see, the id is the basis for all chaos and dysfunction in this story. Eerily enough as it is, the author, Margaret Atwood, has cautioned us that our world, which too is also very obsessed with technology, could easily become that of Oryx and Crake, since they already share many parallels. But only if we live pursuing our ids with just as much effort and desperation. I strongly encourage each and every one of you to get a copy of this book. Thank you so much for your time.